I didn't write it. I saw it. I want to share with you something powerful tonight. If you will believe. Make champions out of this message, my father. You see, many of you, when you hear the word like this, you just think it's a caption to motivate you. No, no. To the extent that I lacked what message would encapsulate, what title. And I said, Lord, you have to help me. And while I slept in the night, I just saw it. Call it commanding results. Hallelujah. What makes certain people to move in levels of results? Levels of power, the manifestations of the word of God. What makes certain ministries prosper and increase? What makes certain individuals look like angels and gods upon the earth? Hallelujah. What makes others very blessed and prosperous? What makes others influential and command such degree of power and grace from the throne? Commanding results. Never forget this message for the rest of your life. Please, final year students, open up your ears, your heart, your spirit, your life and receive this message tonight. Oh, 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 oh. seen with our eyes the manifestations of your word the ancient have told us that this was the secret of the power that commanded authority in their time tonight Lord as we explore this ancient book I pray that the potency of your power will be made manifest in our lives Lord, I pray that we will not disregard this revelation tonight. I pray that we will believe it. We will respect it. We will obey it. And Lord, we are sure that you will perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 21. Matthew 21 Say in the name of Jesus The word of God Is making me a sign And a wonder Like the ancients of old The generals of old The mighty men of old Are making history By the power of the word I believe it. I respect it. In Jesus name. Matthew 21. I start reading from verse 18. Matthew 21. If you are there say amen. 
Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Say he was hungry. So the first thing we see in this chapter is that there is hunger. Hallelujah. And when he saw a fig tree along the way, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Say after me, but leaves. Hmm. Only. And said to it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. The Bible says Jesus was walking and then he saw a tree because he was hungry. Hallelujah. So every hungry man is satisfied when he eats of the fruit of a tree. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says that Jesus saw a tree from afar. It looked wonderful, green. And Jesus came to it and found out that it had only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Only leaves and no fruit. And he was angry. It didn't look like he loved that tree. Because he cursed the tree out of anger. He said, let no fruit come out of you again. Why do you keep deceiving people as though you are a tree that is blossoming? And you make hungry people come to you only to find out that there are only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Okay, thank you. I am sure that Jesus was not the only one who had been deceived by that tree. That tree had a track record of deceiving many people by looking so green. Hallelujah. And every hungry person that was passing would see that tree and believe that that tree would satisfy its hunger. And the Bible says when Jesus came close, he thought the leaves were in, the fruit was inside and he pushed the evergreen leaves. No fruit. What kind of tragedy is this that a tree can grow to a full size, have fruit, I mean, uh, leaves all over and then there is no fruit. And Jesus caused it in anger. Hallelujah. That tree reminds me of many lives and many believers. We look anointed. We talk anointed. We act anointed. Hallelujah. Reminds me of many ministries. Reminds me of many men of God. Many pastors and apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Reminds me of all kinds of people. Many leaders. They look like they are green. They look attractive. Hallelujah. And then you come near only to find out that there is no food that can satisfy the hunger of people. You will be blessed tonight. Oh. You will be blessed tonight. That's a contrast because you see, Jesus never said he is glorified when you have leaves. John 15 verse 8. He says, Sharing is the Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. This is what brings glory to the Father. Not that you become green. Hallelujah. Not that you just become green and blossom, but you bear fruit. Hallelujah. Because when the hungry come, they are looking. The Bible says Jesus was hungry. If you were not hungry, nothing will make him to look for a tree. Because he was passing and he was hungry. And then he saw a tree that attracted him by the leaves. And he came to the tree only to be surprised that there was no fruit. Say, I will bear fruit. Much fruit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so why are certain lives like this? You find out that there is no fruit whatsoever. Listen to me. If you have been serving the Lord for years and years and there is nothing in your life as a sign of a fruit, something is wrong. The end of faith is a performance and a manifestation. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed. He said, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work, he is able to perform it to the end. So, the life of a Christian, eventually in your journey, some fruit should begin to manifest that can attest to the fact that you are planted. Psalms 1, 
Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. How are we sure he meditates day and night? Because eventually he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. Other trees receive their nourishment from the rain, but this guy receives his own from under. He is planted by the rivers. As a result, he yields his fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. But the Bible tells us that we see someone mimicking that blessed man with only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. The Bible says he shall be compared to a tree that is planted how will men who are afar, because they may not see the river that he's planted close to. So how will they see? He will yield his fruit in season. Yes, we agree that, okay, it takes a while for a believer to crystallize the word of God and believe it and absorb it. But eventually, there should be a sign. The Bible says, and Elijah prayed. And he told his servant, go and check. He went. He said, there is no sign. And he prayed. At the seventh time, there was a sign. There will always be a sign that lets us know whether you are growing. Whether you are commanding power and authority. If it is the real tongues you have been praying for years, something in your life, there should be a signature upon your life that there is progress. Are you listening to me? If the Bible says the word of God is able to make you wise and you have truly been meditating on that word, eventually we should see the fruits of divine wisdom. Are you listening to me? The Bible promises us certain things as believers when we walk in the Lord. If you have been walking and living by the word truly, a time must come when men can testify and say there is an evidence. Say after me, evidence. There must be an evidence. Noah told men that God told him that rain was coming, true or false. It took a long time. But eventually, the Bible says that God vindicated him. Abraham was a man who trusted God. And even when he was 75 years, Hallelujah. A promise was made to him. And he waited 25 years for that promise. But eventually, the end of faith is a performance. If you, if you have put your trust and your faith in the word of God, eventually, there must be a performance. Every area of your life cannot be a barren land forever. Are you listening to me? If one area of your life is receiving results, it's a sign that the other area will come. So God will encourage you. If academically you are not doing well, spiritually you are not doing well, health-wise you are not doing well, suddenly when you begin to find out that the anointing of the Spirit is at work in you, what does it tell you? It means fruit is already being produced. Is that correct? And it will motivate you to begin to trust His word in other areas. But where every of your life is a dead, a barren wilderness, something is wrong. Are you listening to me? There are many churches and many people that have given excuses forever. They pray more than anybody else. They fast more than anybody else. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of devotional circulating in town. But I want to ask you a question tonight. How long do you want to watch the leaves on your tree? When will that leaf begin to translate into fruit? That the hungry can come and begin to eat. Because, you see, it is deceit. Jesus saw a tree and was attracted. And when he came to the tree, he just found leaves. And there was no fruit. And he was angry. And he cursed the tree. He said, may fruit never come out of you again. Hallelujah. Two secrets tonight. Number one. You want to command results in your life. Number one. You must have 
absolute faith in God. Absolute faith in God. Demonstrated by total obedience. Absolute faith. Don't just write faith in God. Absolute faith in God. Absolute faith in the word of God. Demonstrated by total obedience. Unwavering obedience. Absolute faith. That you believe that God is faithful and that God is able. The thousands of promises that are scattered in this Bible, God cannot be joking with you. Hallelujah. Absolute faith. Listen, we have ended up complicating Christianity. But do you know, I, I noticed that most of the people that shook their generation, most of them were not even educated people. They took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible, John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou, let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope, not faith. Many believers hope in God. They don't have faith in God. They just hope that one day in the sweet by and by, Verse 12, John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, who is speaking here? This is Jesus Christ. The works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works. Say greater works. And greater works shall he do. This is Jesus Christ talking here. Not an angel. If he sent a prophet, would have said, Oh, the prophet didn't hear well. Are you listening to me? Jesus himself said this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes. And Smith Wigglesworth found this. And said, Lord, are you serious about this? That an uneducated person like me, If I can believe. If I can believe. And God said, Yes. Catherine Kuhlman found this. Amphi McPherson found this. Generals of old found this. Verily, verily. He that believes. Not he that is born again. Not he that is praying in tongues. He that believes. Absolute trust. The works that I do. The works that I do. He shall also do. He said, and greater works greater works. Many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation. Brother, greater means greater. You went to school. Greater means greater. Greater works. That means if you are not seeing greater works, what is the diagnosis? You do not believe. Now, let me tell you something. When it comes to spiritual growth, you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of God has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you. When I was studying this scripture, I said, Lord, does that mean I don't believe in you? God says, simple, to the degree to which you are seeing my works. And I knew I had to accept it. Because brothers and sisters, I have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody. There are some people, some things are possible for are you listening to me? There are some people standing and praying. Oh Lord, bring a boat. And then we see others get on that water and begin to move. The fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing, it kills the excuse that is God that is responsible. Are you listening to me? He that believes in me, the works, 
I remember one of the first times I read this scripture. I was studying Pastor Chris's message and Kenyon on faith. We were going to prepare for crusade. Never had that experience. We didn't know what to expect. But we took this word and said, Lord, this is true. How many of you truly believe in God? How many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said, Those who it didn't even affect them, they just sat down and were looking. And he said, God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying, God is faithful and I move forward. There are, listen, there are many of you who have been sitting, grumbling, shouting at God, saying, God, you are not true. Do you know you are one over how many people who are saying God is faithful? If you say God is not faithful, there are angels whose voices are louder than your own. They, it will overshadow your own belief in an instant. One word, holy. Are you listening to me? Do you believe God's word? Many of you have been reading your Bible. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are many pastors, there are many ministries who only open the Bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people. They don't believe. It's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on Sunday or on Wednesday or on Friday or whatever the meeting days are. There are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God. Tonight I'm asking you, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you, can you take it with childlike simplicity and say, Lord, I believe. Do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you? There are many of you from the time you got to final year, your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe God. Whatever I fear in my life, the faith and the revelation of God's word has not entered there because perfect love casts out fear. So if you are afraid of the future, let me assure you that the revelation of God's word that secures your future has not entered you yet. Are you listening to me? Absolute trust. Father Abraham, and the generals of old these guys believed God and there was a performance and we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith you came to ABU and you believed God that you will be a success then your first result 1.5 7 carryovers hey, hey God you said this boy you just said Lord I believe you you just said Lord I believe you you just said no matter what Lord your word is true and I know that this is not over. Hallelujah. Your uncle promised you that he's going to be blessing you. Suddenly your uncle said, I've changed my mind. He said, ah, but uncle, he said, the only constant thing in life is change. I have changed my mind. And suddenly fear grips you. I tell you, friends, fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life. For when the word of God truly comes, it drives out fear. Say, I refuse to fear. There are so many believers living in the world. We confess God's word. We believe God's word in quotes. But then, the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid. How to Identify and Break Curses Read by Brother Abel There is a class of spirit called the rulers of darkness. That means their dominion is on the strength of the absence of light or an inaccurate understanding on how to apply that light. Misunderstanding and ignorance are the same thing in the realm of the spirit, one who is a possessor of light but cannot apply it adequately and one who is barren of that light, both of them are destined to have the same outcome. So it's not enough to be possessors of light, we must also be possessors of understanding, the system in the kingdom by which we these fruits. Lamentation 5 verse 7, Our fathers have sinned, and are not, and we have borne their iniquities, and are not means they have left the sin. 
Something started with them and their presence departed from the same. But whatever that something is, the Bible says, and we have borne their iniquities. The word born, there is the word inherited. Proverbs 26 verse 2 As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. So the curse causeless shall not come. In other words, if it comes there is a cause. The condition for it not being there is that nothing caused it. That means the presence of any kind of predicament is a sign that it was intentionally initiated. The Bible says there is a law, and this is the law so the curse causeless shall not come. He didn't say shall not stand, but shall not come. It won't even manifest in the first place. So the fact that it was able to appear in your destiny, regardless of what caused it, this law was properly obeyed for it to find expression, there are so many believers who do not understand the laws of the kingdom and systems of God, we confess so many things we do not understand in the body of Christ and we are victims of situation and circumstance. There are so many people who do not even believe that there is such a phenomenon in the dealings of men in the earth called a system where men can experience what the Bible calls a curse. The word curse sounds insulting, antichrist, degrading. But it's interesting to know that the first person who used it in the Bible was God. The first person to reveal the possibility that a man's life can be programmed to experience war was not even Satan, but God Almighty. When man fell in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says, and they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day, and he came and said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard your voice but I hid myself because I'm naked. God said, Who told you, you were naked? And then the man said, The woman you gave me, the woman in turn blamed the serpent. The Bible says God caused the serpent that he will crawl on his belly and feed upon the dust of the earth. Then God turned to the woman and made another pronouncement of pain in childbirth, and then God turned to the earth and said, Cursed are you, for the sake of the man, thorns and thistles shall begin to come out. The second experience was with a man called Cain. When he killed his brother and God called on him and asked of his brother. He replied and said, Am I my brother's keeper? And God said that the blood of his brother cries from the earth and then he cursed Cain and when he listed all the curses, a fugitive and a vagabond shall you be, Cain negotiated and said, Whoever sees me, something upon me will cause him to want and we are victims of situation and circumstance. There are so many people who do not even believe that there is such a phenomenon in the dealings of men in the earth called a system where men can experience what the Bible calls a curse. What is a curse? A curse is a mystery, that means the operation of a curse cannot be studied intellectually. You must be able to study it from the standpoint of the realm of the spirit. A curse is a spiritual force. A curse has magnetic characteristics, an attractive power. It can attract certain things to a victim a curse is always negative in its manifestation. There is no such thing as positive curse. A curse is an invocation, a programming that is designed to attract woes and calamities to the life of its victims. A curse can be made manifest in the life of a person through utterances and pronouncements. The Bible made us to understand that utterances and pronouncements have prophetic implications, whether from the positive or negative dimension, every time an utterance is made, it has an effect that is supported from the realm of the spirit. Whether it was done in ignorance or intelligently, there is a support system in the realm of the spirit that helps to back up the outcome of that pronouncement. So the Bible says, Say not before an angel that I made a mistake causes can find expression through written words. When you study world religions, you will find out that there are many religions that work like legal system. They have slates, books, manuals and all kinds of things. All of these documents are a system. So whenever they are invoking a certain dimension of mana, they have capacities to program woes to the lives of people. Characteristics of a curse Our idea of a curse is this, someone offends you and you make a pronouncement in anger and it brings a curse. The answer is no. In this world once you are alive you need to find what happened before you, because you can be a victim that predates your existence. It is easy to know that a personality, a family, a territory is under a curse. 
the first indication of the presence of a curse in a line or family is pattern. Repetition of negative pattern that seems to veto individual's prayer life and supposed spiritual activities. The classic indication of curses and blessings in the Bible is pattern. The way you can know that a man, a place, an individual is blessed, there is a track record of frequent happening, regardless of the condition. So we look at the life of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the Israel of God and we see a pattern, everyone who spoke against them was judged by God. There was something upon them. Every time they violated the commands of God, they were given to their enemies. It was a pattern. Patterns are very common in the lives of people, we just pretend that they are not there. One of the reasons people do not rise in power and fame is because of insincerity. When you want to approach the things of the Spirit, we must be open-hearted and sincere, your heart must be broken and contrite. This pattern ranges from all kinds and it happens everywhere. There are patterns as far as finances are concerned. There are patterns as far as family lives are concerned. Look at that average life of the Africans, and you will know that there are patterns. The curse is not the failure, the failure is the message, and the patterns are message, not the curse. The curse is spiritual. It is an atmosphere, it's like a cloud, a mantle that an individual carry. It has capacity to break barriers, to follow you. It can pursue and overtake a man. In Deuteronomy 28, God gave a list blessings and curses. Irrespective of where you are, it has that capacity, that limitless capacity, a quality only given to spiritual thing. A curse is not failure, it is not barrenness, and it is not retrogression. They are just messages, symbols that dignify such an atmosphere upon a man. Joshua 7 verse 1 But the children of Israel committed a trespass in their cursed thing, for Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zobdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of their cursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Verses 10 And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lead thou thus upon the face. Verse 11 Israel had sinned and they have transgressed my covenant which I commanded them, for they have even taken of their cursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Verse 12 Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed, neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. The Bible didn't say Achan had sinned but instead says Israel had sinned. The covetousness of one man made God to say the whole of Israel had sinned. They went to a battle and were utterly defeated. Joshua went to God crying, but God told him that what he needed was an understanding of what made Israel so defeated and accursed thing, and God said he won't be with them anymore unless they remove the accursed. It's no more an accursed thing but accursed person. Accursed is real, it is in families, pastors, apostles, prophets, great people. A cause doesn't necessarily mean that an individual personally sinned against God. There are many families, individuals carrying things in their lives, that they can laugh around in church that cause doesn't exist not happens. Cause causeless shall not come. Meaning if it comes, don't just probe its effect, but its cause. Given this scenario I have a boil in my hand and I run to the doctor for help. He looked at it and smiled and says it's as a result of white blood cells fighting against some germs in the body. The doctor then prescribed a solution that makes my hand gets better. You cannot enter your body to know if you are winning, so you use the absence of the evidence, boil, as a sign that you are recovering. All of a sudden, a boil that refused to go despite all your personal effort to cure it, for as long as what is causing it is still there. But when the doctor explained to you that the issue is not the boil but the reason or cause of the boil, he introduces something to your system and the boil dries off. You may not appreciate this because somebody is paying your bills, because no matter how careless you are, somebody's harvest is paying for you, thinking you are the one sowing. A day will come when you will be exposed to reality and then know that your life is dependent on the outcome of your understanding. There are patterns that should not happen to believers, if they are happening, 
something should be dealt with, and it should not be ignored, but understood and dealt with. Some patterns in the lives of people there are families today that all the men in that family never move forward nor rise. There are families that every month per year, somebody must die, regardless of how sincere they are. It can even be after a church service or prayer meeting, on their way back, they die. There are some families that their ladies don't get married in due time. So many hardworking men, yet they are begging. Some started building house 20 years ago and have not been able to complete it. House full of graduates, yet no job. Many people with several terrible diseases your victory starts when you are humble. The fact that you look like your father or your mother should teach you about something in the realm of the spirit. Your born again does not change your physical appearance, it is a spiritual reality. There are pastors full of anointing yet not growing physically, it's a pattern. Barrenness, fruitfulness but not productive, giving birth to several children and yet none is successful getting pregnant out of wedlock, a pattern shown in a family. There is a system in the kingdom where one can have dominion. It's not just about what Christ has done, it is that we can be alienated from the life that we got through the ignorance that is in our heart. If you don't deal with this curse now, when you marry it follows you there, as you marry your partner, both of you are bringing what you individually represent and you move into the house together. This is why people erroneously call people witches and wizards, it is because they are open to the prophetic, but because they do not actually have the understanding of the word of God. They see the spirit that is behind that activity, mistaking it for the individual. Things went haywire after you got married to your wife, finances collapsed and setbacks draw in. After consulting ministers of God, they claim it's your wife that is behind your predicament. The truth is that she is not the issue, but the curse she carried over to marriage, not to talk of the one you carry to her too to become one, the system of curses outlives those who caused it. The primary purpose of a curse is to create a system for transgenerational allegiance, allegiance to darkness, to devil. Ignorance can alienate a man from the plan of God. Sources of Curses 1. Curses can come directly from God, not a curse from the law, but a curse directly from God. The curse from God can also be called a sinner's curse. Every sinner is under the curse of God. Everyone who has not acknowledged Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior is under a curse. What was the curse? The dominion of evil perpetually remains above you. The moment you are not in Christ, you qualify for very curse that is upon creation, that from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return, that thorns and thistles shall come upon your ground, and from the sweet of your brow shall you feed. There is a curse upon creation, it cannot be taken away, and you can only get exempted. That is why the whole earth will be purged by fire. There is a reality mortality is a curse that came upon creation. There is such a possibility that a day your life and ministry drive hell away, you will see the reaction immediately. If you see men rise as if Satan does not exist, it's because they have accessed the mysteries that immune them. But to refuse that this doesn't exist is a beginning of deception. There is a system in the kingdom for exemption, but the first key is to acknowledge that there is such a reality on earth. A lot of people do not believe that curses are real. It's foolish to believe that sickness and poverty are real and not believe that curses are real, the same boss brought all of them. How you know you are free from curses is that you don't fall sick and you also don't get poor. If you can still get poor as a believer, then make no mistake that curse cannot come. There was woman called the widow of Nain, her husband died likewise her only son, and while the son about to be buried, Jesus saw this and said this is not an issue of